Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter well we're going to talk again about process thinking principles. Um, I've introduced to you if you haven't seen it before go look it up the four process thinking principles that allow you to literally solve any problem any problem at all go look them up because you'll find those super useful and you'll make piles of cash so go look up the other video with the four process thinking principles but I'm going to add some more process thinking to the um, to the pot today and I want to talk about problem solving and how to apply the right problem solving technique okay so process thinking principles applying problem solving tools and basically it's this simple principle when you have a problem and you want to try and fix it there's a question that you have to ask and it's this simple question is my process in a state of chaos or is it in a state of control so has my problem appeared from a chaotic situation or has it appeared from a controlled situation if it's appeared from a chaotic situation it's probably going to take me three months with a cross-functional team and a project to fix it by the way if your new product introduction process is a disaster all of your problems are going to look like this because you haven't got a flipping clue how to implement control if you're not using FMEA properly. However, if you are using FMEA properly and the process is in control, this problem is going to take three minutes to fix. It can be fixed typically with one person. The problem will have a root cause is relatively easy to find and therefore the tools you use here are completely different the team approach a project approach deep deep problem solving that goes on in this situation here this is just a process audit it's a piece of cake very simple so what's the difference between chaos and control well all you have to do plot a graph and you'll know apply the problem solving tools to the right problem in the right way what does chaos look like it looks like that your process is a complete disaster totally unreliable totally unpredictable probably you have a tolerance and you get super agitated and you try and do problem solving when the peaks go over some kind of specification or target line if what you try to do here is apply five ways here five ways or you try to do 8D in three days expect that to be an unmitigated 
disaster. You will keep coming back to this problem over and over again because you have multi-causal. You don't have a root cause. There is no root cause when you have this disaster going on. Basically, you don't have control of the process. Lots of your inputs are out of control. It is multi-causal. You will never fix it with five ways. You will never fix it in three days. Just because you're trying to please your customer by getting the idea out the door in a three day window and make it look like you're trying to achieve something. If you are in chaos, there is no shortcut to the three month project. You could ask any professional into your company. You could pay them a million pound a day they're still going to take three months to fix your chaotic process. Multi-causal, many things are wrong, and all that happens is those many things conspire against you. They're all out of control here as well, but sometimes they're in a good place, so all of the variables don't conspire against you. You get your extreme results when all of your variables are all in an extreme state, and that's when you get your complete, your sign that you have a problem. But to be quite honest, if you look at that graph, that problem exists every single day. Even if you don't breach the limit, you've got chaos on your hands. Three months to fix, team and a project. It's the only way to do it. This one, control. What does control look like? Well, it looks like this. It looks like a nice consistent process. You know what it's gonna do every day. It's, it's hitting a particular target and behaving itself every day. Then all of a sudden, bang, it does that on you. Now that, this is gonna have a root cause. In other words, it's gonna have one thing that's wrong. One thing has fallen over. A bearing has collapsed on the machine. A new operator has appeared and we failed to give him proper training maybe. Um, raw materials come in and for some reason it's not the specification. It's one thing that's wrong. Because the chance that all of your controls, don't forget, you've got control. Everything you do is just so, bang, 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 bang. The chance that four of those controls would all go on the same day is so unlikely this is going to have a root cause but this every variable is bouncing around every day there's no root cause to be found this is going to be a complete waste of your time so stop doing it give yourself a team in three months and get the process under control this on the other hand well now five ways works beautifully here by the way where a toyota they're here, that's why they use five ways and that's why it works. Where are most other companies? They're here, producing chaotic processes. That's why it doesn't work. So if you understand the principles of chaos and control, you understand what types of techniques you're gonna use. By the way, this is normally, in order to find this, it's simply a process audit. You simply pull up the control plan and you audit every one of your controls on the control plan. They are all inputs to the process. You will find one of them has gone wrong. When you find it, you fix it. It'll take between three minutes and three hours for you to do that. Very easy to fix very simple problem solving tools. This, very difficult to fix, cause and effect diagrams, lots of, lots of documents have got to be created, lots of controls have got to be created. You've got to write that into your auditing procedures. New maintenance procedures are going to have to be created. There's all sorts of work goes on here. Deep, deep problem solving here. Simple, quick, easy problem solving here. Are you in chaos or are you in control? That's the first question to ask in any problem that you're doing. So at the define phase of your problem, first question 
Is it this? Or is it this? Because unless you know that, you won't know what comes next. Chaos or control? Which one have you got? What does your problem solving look like? Do you ever keep solving the same problem? Week in, week out, and then you have to go back three weeks later and solve the same problem? That's because you don't know the difference between chaos and control. If you do that, your problem solving will be deeper and more successful. And guess what you'll do? You'll make bucket loads of extra cash. Go and understand these two things and be more successful at problem solving.